Welcome to another Dualpreneur Virtual Mastermind. I am Tara Jackson, AKA Madam Money, and I am your host. And I am a dualpreneur. And if you work full-time or part-time and you are also an entrepreneur, you are awesome. You are also a dual you understand the whole concept of having multiple streams of income because we got multiple streams of bills and dreams. <laughs> you know that you can keep your benefits and build your business too, boo. You know, and if you are addicted to the direct deposit like me, you understand. It's okay. It is so okay. And we are here to provide you with the resources, information, and experts that you need to be successful. Hashtag keep dualpreneurs in business. We encourage you to find what you need for your business and personal life as well inside of the community in the dualpreneur group. Ask the question of whatever you need, find the resources there because we do want to keep dualpreneurs in business, especially during this time of the corona pandemic quarantine and beyond that. So I am excited to be your host for this session. Now, all the sessions, we've really been talking about business, business structure, how to grow your business. But this is another way that you can grow your business as well. Not only your business business, but your personal business. Have you ever wanted to start investing, but you kind of didn't know how to begin? If you should begin, you kind of been a little bit scared. You see that the market is tanking and people are scared. Well, actually the market is on sale. That's my philosophy. So all the stock, stocks that were so expensive to get, some of them are really low. It's like getting those $200 pair of shoes and now they're on sale for $10. I'm gonna think you're gonna get that pair of shoes, probably 10 more, right? Because the value is gonna go up. But hey, I am not the expert on this. I had to bring in my sister. Deborah Owens. She is the founder of Wealthy You, and she is my wealth building expert. Miss Deborah, thank you so much for coming on today, for sharing what we need to know about investing tips to build our wealth, especially as dualpreneurs. I so appreciate you. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here. Always a pleasure, Tara. I just love the work that you do. And I mean, how timely, because what we know is that in a time of crisis right now, now is, when we, now is when we really understand the need to have more than one stream of income. And you know, I often talk about diversifying your assets, but diversifying your income stream is just as important. So thank you so much for having me this evening, Tara. Thank you so much. And so we're gonna get right into it because you have some great information that we are actively wanting to know about. So one, can you tell us about you, who you are, how awesome you are, and then some tips, investing tips on how we can build our wealth as dualpreneurs? Excellent. Well, that's exactly what I have in store for you this evening. And I want to just thank everybody for attending. And I see quite a few of the Wealthy You crew here. And so thanks so much for coming in and hanging out once again. So if it's okay, if it's, is it all right if I share my screen now? Perfect. Let's see if technology is going to, uh, yay. I love it when technology works. So, uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Deborah Owens. I'm uh, a, the founder and CEO of Wealthy You, and also known as America's Wealth Coach. And so, the 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 fact of the matter is, I am you. I am no different from you. However, my path it really took me into the world of investing and. Uh, one of the things that I like to share is the fact that I didn't come from wealth. So here I am, I come into this investment company and I'm wondering to myself, wow, how come I don't even know this world exists? So I spent the bulk of my career with Fidelity Investments and a few other companies that I consulted with, but I knew that I really had a love for just sharing with my community, specifically black women, on what they really needed to do to secure their bag. I mean, the truth is that there are so many reasons where there's why there's a huge wealth gap, and I'm sure you guys have heard it. You know, the median net worth of African American women is like $200 compared to $40,000 for others. 
But so much of that is just based on our lack of access to the right information. Uh, and so I really took the position very early on my, in my career that the wealth gap was a knowledge gap. And so I took many different approaches to uh, get the information to the audience that I wanted to have it to have. So I went on, I toured with uh, Bishop Jakes and God's Leading Ladies. I wrote several books, Nickel and Dime Your Way to Wealth, Confident Investing, uh, Every Woman's Money, A Purse of Your Own. And it became really clear that it wasn't just information, that women, what they really needed was accountability and support. And uh, so five years ago, I founded Wealthy You, and that company now, our sole focus is teaching women, black women more specifically, how to secure their bag. And so I do a lot of media, a lot of radio, however, whatever I have to do to connect with the audience that I serve. But what's really, really interesting is um, that we weren't taught. And typically when you learn how to invest, you learn how to invest either from, from a family member or a private wealth manager. And if I don't know about you, my family didn't invest and we certainly didn't have a private wealth manager. And so just specifically for your audience, what I wanna talk about is we have some unique needs and you know you can't change what you can't will not acknowledge so what i want to share tonight are just some insight and perspectives uh that we talk about in wealthy you and specifically some things that you can do to really secure your bag and so uh, you know i think the most important concept that i that it's important for everybody to understand is that there's a difference between income and wealth and it is so uh uh, how can I say transparent now? We see the difference between those who have, who can basically be in quarantine and others that don't have to go to work. That's the difference, right? If you are earning an income versus really having some assets set aside so that you didn't have to put yourself at, at risk. But so much of uh, the work that I do is not just technical and teaching people about investing. It's that, you know, as a community, we have some real attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors that regardless of how much money we earn or make, because those beliefs are prevalent, they, they become obstacles into whether or not we still can achieve uh, financial security and real wealth. And uh, you know, now it's more important than ever. And what I've been spending a lot of time in my community actually showing up nightly, they'll tell you, and just sharing with them, you know, that now is not the time to be afraid, that you have to understand the difference between investing, right? And, and uh, speculating and in, in order to increase your tolerance for this kind of volatility that we're seeing right now, you've got to understand how the markets work. But the most important thing of all for folks to our, our community understand is that you have to become an owner and not just an earner. And so what that means is not just, so, so let's be real, like I know this myth out here is, you know, everybody can start a business and make a gazillion dollars, when in fact, the average business earns about $42,000 a year. And if we really put that down into uh, African-American owned businesses, it's like $25,000 is the average revenue per year. And so I think that we have a tendency to kind of fantasize entrepreneurship. And I'm here to tell you, I'm an entrepreneur and it is not for the faint of heart. And that's why I love your approach, Tara, because you're saying, hey, don't quit your Jake day job until you can have enough income in to replace that. And so that's really the message I, I want to share with your audience tonight. And you know, I, I love stories and I think stories are a great way to kind of convey concepts. And, and the way I want to uh, kind of, you know, give you a sense of the difference between income and wealth is a story. 
And on, on the left there is Asia Ola McCarty. So, you know, just in the, if, if folks can say, how many of you have ever heard of Osceola McCarty? Anybody know who she is? Osceola McCarty was a wash woman from Mississippi and she saved $250,000 just from her little earnings. And I marveled at that story when I first heard it. And I thought to myself, man, what if she had invested? And then I met Mr. Earl. Mr. Earl is the topic of my uh, book, Nickel and Dime Your Way to Wealth. True story, a parking attendant who never went as far as the, uh, he went to school th through, he got through the eighth grade. He went to night school to finish uh, his, ed his high school education and graduated at the age of 21. Well, when I met Mr. Earl and sat down with him and did a portfolio review, he saved up the same kind of nickels and dimes she did, only he had a half a million dollars. And so that was the difference, one saved, one invested. And so the fact is that if you're going to build wealth, you, can, you have to invest, you cannot save your way to wealth. And even with the volatility in of the market, you know, and I know some of you are probably looking at your 401ks and saying, oh, I got a 201k now. But what I want to share with you tonight and what I've been sharing with my community is, in fact, one of the first things I really, uh, my aha moment, all right, and the insight that I gained from being inside with wealth is that wealth, wealthy people do the opposite of most people. And the fact is when the market goes down, to your point, you talked about stocks being on sale, assets, that's when they accumulated more assets. When the market went down, they came in at night, they put their orders in, while during the day, everybody was in there selling. And you know, we were on in our Wealthy You community on Facebook last night, and one of our uh, members said something that was so profound, it just blew our minds. She was like, yeah, you know, poor people buying tish toilet paper, and uh, uh, rich people or wealthy people are investing in Kimberly Clark stock, right? We're motivated by fear. Whereas they're looking at seeing the opportunity, or as I like to phrase it, the possibility and volatility. And so if we're going to change, if you want to be uh, someone who builds wealth with your side hustle, that's the, the major concept that you have to understand. And I really want to frame the conversation because the fact is, I know so many people are looking at, oh, well, Black, black people have a lot of money right? And in fact, this is a chart from the uh, Census Bureau that basically what I want you to see is the fastest growing, right? So this is African American, the green line, and this is non-Hispanic white folks, right? If you look at our income growth, the fastest growing segment of uh, income for African Americans is the over 150,000. You see that? And so the fact is, and, and I see it every day because I do personal coaching. Now, I don't manage portfolios, but I have clients with hundreds of thousands of dollars who I'm teaching them how to invest and analyze their money. And in fact, what I see is it's so often we are so conservative that it limits our ability to really grow our money, which takes me to this point is that Certainly we've seen a decline, but if you see from 1992 to 2006 to 2016, the not, white folks doubled the amount of people who had a um, million dollars or more in net worth, whereas we stayed flat in the percentage. Now, if you look in these numbers, what you will find, one of the reasons for that, and I'm not going to, I didn't want to get too technical. If you look at how the number of us who have actual stocks in our portfolio, they're one tenth of what the percentage of the rest of the folks, which is why our money didn't grow, right? And so the point is our incomes went up, but our net worth did not. 
And the reason that that happened is because we are fearful of the volatility or seeing our money go up and down. And so the last uh, chart that I'm going to show you tonight, I mean, I'm a numbers lady, right? So I, I, I will, I will um, uh, interpret these numbers for you, but I think it's important that you understand that I'm not just talking out of the side of my head, you know, I, and that's the other point I got to make. And we talked about this, you know, we get so caught up in conspiracies. You know, how many of you see in the 5G and this and that? No, we don't get ready. You know, it's like, come on. Whereas, you know, I'm not thinking of 5G from a conspiracy standpoint. I'm thinking of, okay, what is the impact of five, that 5G is going to have in all these companies and who are the companies that are going to profit for that? So while we over here in fear, <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help it, but I know you've seen these crazy videos. But what I want you to understand is that innovation is how the wealth is built. And so basically what this chart is showing that after every major collapse, right? Despite market pullbacks, stocks have risen over the long term, right? So this is showing from 1985 to the coronavirus. You with me? And after, here's the collapse of the bird while blip, takes a little while, but keeps on going up. Then we have the dot-com bubble burst. Remember that? Y2K, boom, right? Iraq war comes down. Then we have the global financial crisis. Boom. 2010, you know, financial crisis across the board, foreclosures, blah, blah, blah. Then we have the largest bull run ever, and now we're here. But the thing I want to call your attention to is that this is up, right? And after every major decline, there is a rise. And so while most of us are selling, if you're continuing to buy here your assets while they're here. And so that's the point I wanna make. You just gotta stay in the game. And that's really the whole focus of the work that I do is demystifying investing and helping. And because one of the things I know to be true is that I have had you know coaching clients and wealthy you that have been afraid of everything and now they're more aggressive than I am. You're, I mean, they, they're buying stocks it's on and popping. But the other thing I want you to understand that building wealth, getting to that million dollars, you know, if you take care of the pennies, the dollars will take care of themselves. And so basically this shows is that the earlier you start, the easier, the less you've got to uh, put in. So if you're 25, you, you put in $320 a month for 30 years, you can get to, um, uh, uh, a million, 35, 45, 55. So it, you know, it gets up here, it gets a little tough, but the point, other point I wanna make is never too late. We have people in wealthy you who have doubled the amount that they have and they've retired in five years. And I mean, it's just amazing, but what was the difference? The difference was they acquired the financial acumen, they learned how to analyze and research stock, how mutual funds, how to build a portfolio and how to take calculated risk. And with that is power, right? The power of knowing, you know, the women and wealthy you, they turn on CNBC. Now they're not intimidated because they understand what price aid earnings ratios. They understand that they're analyst calls. They understand the language of investing. And that's the only thing that's holding us back. And if they can do it, you can do it too. But this really puts things in perspective because basically these are all companies that you know. And do you know that if you had invested $1,000 in Netflix in 10 years, it would have grown to $52,000. Amazon, uh, Apple, you know, these are what you call the fame stocks. You've heard them, right? Amazon, uh, Alphabet, which is Google. Okay. And so, my point is, who are going to be the Googles and the Amazon of the, and the Netflix of the future, right? Are they going to be those 5G companies? You know, I was looking at CNBC today. I was fascinated. They have this robot that can go in and with UV lighting can 
like literally disinfect, get any, get rid of any pathogen right? So what are going to be the, you need to be able to research. You think I didn't go online and I wasn't, oh, what's that company? I got to check them out, right? Because I want to get them in the first or second in, inning, not in the sixth or seventh. But the, oh, and, and here's the other thing I want to say, just because so-and-so said you should buy something don't mean you should buy it. Just because you like Sephora doesn't necessarily mean you like Sephora. You should invest in it you've got to have the acumen through which you can take it through criteria and really determine, is it positioned to grow in the future? And I think so often, you know, like these apps. So you got Stash, you got, uh, what, Acorns, you got all these things, you know. <laughs> I, I ain't laughing at y'all, but, uh, you know, I get, we get people in co coaching that I'm like, what? how'd you buy this? Oh, well, I just like that stock. That is not a reason to buy anything, right? Just because you can doesn't mean you should. But this is how you build wealth. You guys get getting where I'm going here? Like, this is the difference between you right now, how much are you earning in your savings account? The Fed just lowered rates. It's probably down to zero now. We're at zero rates, right? So... Literally, you are losing money by having your money in a savings account. So what you have to be, now I'm by no means saying, I don't want none of y'all to get out. Ooh, I listened to her and she said that everybody needs to go and put all their, that isn't stock. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that you have to be able to take calculated risk and that monies that you have earmarked, you've got, you know, 10 years or more to invest, you can be aggressive. Now, if you are nearing retirement or something like that, the key is to not only are we talking about diversifying your income, your portfolio, we're talking about diversifying your income stream. And so a great way, uh, a methodology for this is to get that side hustle on so that you can start investing in these mutual funds, 50 or $100 a day, it really adds up. And hold on, I don't wanna go here first, Oops, did I forget my chart? I have my compounding chart. It's gone. No. Well, basically I had a chart. Hang on just a second. I'm going to stop sharing because I have to get this chart for you guys because this is like, do you guys want to understand how money works? Then I have got to find this chart for you and I'm going to do it right now. Nothing will stop me. <laughs> <laughs> just gotta you know make it happen in the middle so i hope i don't mess up your presentation tara but i would be remiss if i did not show this amazing how easy it is to make your money grow yeah while you're looking for that i i love what you're saying as far as you know, starting where you are, but start as young as you can. And even if you're not young, you can still do it. And being a dualpreneur can probably leverage you to give you the extra money so that you can invest, not and just that's, in business, and, but in also stock market. Yes, and that's exactly why you need it, right? You need it to, this is how you can, but the key is to set it up so that it's going in automatically. You know what I mean? Like most of us are waiting for this big lump sum of money to somehow drop out of heaven and then that's going to fix all our problems. But do you know the most important thing you need in order to build wealth? Guess what it is? It's time. 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 I call time the metabolism of money, right? So I think about when I was 18 and I used to eat all this food and then I could, you know, lay down, go to sleep, and I could be skinnier the next day, right? That's because of my metabolism worked harder. But as I got older, my metabolism didn't work as hard. So now I can eat a grape and gain 10 pounds when I wake up, <laughs> which now requires me to put forth more effort if I want to stay the same size. So when I was younger, I didn't have to put forth that much effort. 
But as I get older, I'm going to have to put forth effort just to maintain my weight, my weight. And so the younger you are, the more your metabolism works. That's the same thing with money and time. The younger you are, the more the money meant metabolism really works for you. Now it is still work for you when you're older, but it's probably, <laughs> you probably have to work a little bit harder or invest more to get the same results. That's right. Okay. So I've got it. So can I share my screen again? Absolutely. Okay, perfect. So let me just, uh, you're share. I think you're sharing it now. I'm sharing now. Great. Yeah. Okay. So, so I just want to show you the difference though. The difference that, uh, earning more money at different rates of return. Okay, so this is the average of what savings accounts have returned about 4% over time. Okay, so, you know, and this is $500 a month, that's $125 a week. So whether you're selling an ebook or some, whatever your side hustle, if you can get to $500 a month, if you invested in just a regular savings account, I'm being generous because we know we're not earning that right now, right? In 20 years, or let's just say in, 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 in 10 years, in, in 15 years, you can get to 125000 But if you're investing in stocks, you're going to end up with double the amount. That is the power of kind of small over time. In 20 years is the difference between, so this was Osceola McCarty, right? And savings account. And this was Mr. Earl. That's all the difference was. So if you want to speed up your metabolism, then you got to do it by investing in stocks. But you have to be responsible just in terms of how you invest in stocks. And you need to understand the language of money and how to analyze and research stocks. And I think so often that is what kind of um that's what what you know prevents us from accomplishing what we want to do because we know we should do it but then we're fearful and we're thinking oh well you know maybe maybe that's not what i'm supposed to do uh and what i what i know to be true is when you learn how to invest then that fear diminishes as you get, um, as you gain confidence and you actually learn how the, how to invest, how to, how the stock market works, and then you're no longer fearful. And so, you know, the, the, the point, I, the other point I wanted to make as well is how things can happen over time. So are you guys looking at my um, my screen right now? Can you see it? Yes. Okay, perfect. So basically what this is showing is, you know, the other chart, chart kind of show that is never to, um, you know, the earlier you start, the better. But this chart shows it's never too late, right? So even at, 49, right? Let's say you're putting $5,500 in a year. So going back to that, literally $400 or $500 a month. And in 20 years, you can still get to a couple of hundred dollars, a couple of hundred thousand dollars. Let's say you're just putting it in an IRA or an S&P IRA if you've got a side hustle you know, that extra $600, $700, that's your extra $300,000. Or let's say you're putting the maximum in your IRA, which is now 19,000, then that puts you, and if your employer is matching, that's really gonna take you up a notch, right? You get So this is how you can get to a half a million. But so the key is, it, I don't care where you fall, the key is to get started. And now to your point, uh, investments are lower. And I don't even care if the market goes lower, fine. If you're systematically investing in an, uh, an SEP IRA, a Roth IRA, a personal 401k, 
Do you know if you're self-employed and you have a, a personal 401k, you can put up to $52,000 in it a year. But I think when I use those big numbers, people are like $52,000, who's got that? But I don't care if you got $100 a month, just start. And then let the power of compounding start working for you. And that's how the magic happens. And so one of the things I wanted to do is Remember that story I told you about Osceola McCarty and uh, Mr. Earl? Well, I wrote a book about it. And so what I want to offer all of your folks is a free copy of it. If they just go to this link, DeborahOwens.com forward slash ebook, and they fill out that information, they'll have an ebook sent to them. Right. Can you they, share? Can you share that screen of where they can get that? Do you have that one? You're not seeing it. No, we're just seeing the wealthy rule of thumb. Ah, that's interesting. You can't see the ebook. No. Huh, that's interesting. Hang on. Let me let me come out. Let me make sure that I'm sharing the right thing here. While you're doing that, so the important thing now is to get started. And you know, start with things that you normally would buy. That's how I start. I do a scavenger hunt every now and then, and things that I buy the most, I look to see if they are, you know, is it owned by a specific company? Is the company publicly traded? And then look at the charts to see what direction the company's going. I'll read a little history on the uh, on the company as well to see how they're doing. And companies, especially during this time in the pandemic, companies like Walmart. Target. Those are, they usually do very good in this time. There are some CBD companies that are doing well uh, during this time. Pharmaceuticals, I'm going to yield that to um, Miss Deborah. I have, I think some pharmaceuticals may be doing good. I haven't seen the ones that I was looking at. They're relatively okay. But what I get excited about is when everyone gets really um, scared and then they start uh, leaving, like for example, Nike. My stock in Nike, although it drops significantly, to me, now it's on sale so I can buy more of it. Because once this is over, Nike is going to go up based on the, their, historical, um, the, the, their historical factors, right? So yeah, I got it when I was, when it was around 50, about, I got it when it was around 70 something. It went down to almost 50 something. I think it's creeping back up. But when it hit around almost 50 something, maybe 59 or something, I bought more of it. So when it starts going back up, now instead of owning, you know, 10 shares, I now own 20 shares when it's going to go back up beyond 70 and $80 per share. Yeah, so, and that's called dollar cost averaging, right? right. And, and the, 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 the only point I, I want to make is do your homework, yes. right? And so can you see the screen now? Yes, yes. Okay, Thank perfect. You. So if they go to that uh, web address, it'll ask them to just put their name and email address on, and then they'll be able to download the book. And so I hope, I, I just want to say thank you so much for having me on this evening, and I hope this has been of real value, and I'll turn it back over to you now. Thank you, Miss Deborah. And if you can stop sharing your screen, yeah, we can see your lovely face. Um, I want to thank you so much. How can people stay in contact with you, get some more tips, um, possibly join your wealthy you? Well, the best way to uh, learn more about what's going on is by going to Facebook and going to the wealthy you community. You can also get to all of the resources by going to just deborahowens.com. Uh, that's where all my articles are. And in fact, we also have uh, events that are coming up uh, that we've got an all day event coming up this Saturday. And usually we do those Wealthy You Master classes quarterly. And so they can sign up and get all of their information by just going to DeborahOwens.com. Beautiful. So that is what I want everyone to do. Is there a way you can stop sharing your screen so we can? I thought I was stop. I thought I had stopped sharing. No. Yeah. No. No. Okay. It's okay. Okay. okay there, there we go. go. Now we can see you. Okay. Good job. So again, thank you so much 
for you know sharing and imparting your information. I would like to open it up to anyone that has questions. If you do have questions, just simply um, unlock, you know, unmute yourself and ask your questions. That would be great. While we have Miss Deborah here. Unless you did such a wonderful job, they don't have any questions because they got all the information that they need. So you, you mentioned that a few of the apps, like some of the apps that are out there, you, you weren't really agreeing with. If someone wants to get started, what do you recommend on how do they get started with so just- What I would say that, you know, um, there are some great apps out there. So uh, one that many of our members use is Stash and Stash allows you to um set up accounts set up monthly amounts for as little as five dollars there are really no limit the point that i want to make is don't just buy anything right they they have some great facebook groups uh that are that will show you where different holdings are and can give you some suggestions you just do your homework yeah um the other one that i found i didn't know this until recently but cash app allows you to purchase stocks as really? well. Yes. <laughs> ah, that's I, I didn't know I didn't know that because I wanted to purchase Netflix and um, Zoom and someone showed showed me how to invest in those stocks, you know, and they can you can do it as low as like five, ten dollars, whatever, but you can do it through Cash App. So yeah. That is Yeah, that's great. The key is do your homework, right. get started. Uh, thank you so much for having me, Tara. I hope uh, your community gets value out of this. And again, we hang out in the Wealthy You Community Facebook, and all we do is talk about stocks, investing, the market, the economy, you name it. If it has to do with wealth, we're talking about it. Great. And so if you have any other questions, Miss T, did you have any questions before we go? Okay. Okay, great. And so I want to thank everyone. I know Miss Deborah is in high demand, so she has a session right after this. I do. I, <laughs> I want to thank everyone for coming in. If you have any more questions, just type them in the comments below. Type uh -huh. it to replay, and we will get those questions to Miss Deborah so she can answer those questions. I really appreciate you. Thank you always for tuning in. This has been an awesome session. You packed the house out, Mama. Oh, <laughs> real. Great. To Thanks the wealthy, so wealthy you crew, congratulations. Okay. Appreciate y'all coming in. I want to thank you so much. Have a great day. Love you. There's nothing you can do about it. And don't forget, wash your hands. <laughs> All right. Take care.